Welcome, ladies. Hello, Zandra. Thank you so much for being here. Of course. So you ladies, I know I want to start with Paula, who is an actress and a good friend of mine. Yes, my honey. Who has been in the business as we were discussing since she was... Let's say five, yes. My dad died when I was three. So the first thing I did publicly would be at the Caramel Theater in Cleveland, Ohio. I did a play at five. Wow. And then you grow up and everyone knows you as Joy <laughs> on Friday, which is so interesting because when you booked Friday, uh-huh. you asked me to do your hair and nails and you mention it very often in different interviews, which is funny to me that what people like ask about. Girl, but I can't believe that you still... Blessing. But, I, I mean, I I just want to say, I appreciate that you continue to add me to the story. So, thank you. Oh, sweetie, you're a part of the story. There's no way I could get around adding you to the story. Oh, my God. <laughs> Those nails, girl. I could go this way. I <laughs> okay, let's try this way. No, no, there's no way, baby. You know, we... We had we had fun. We, we definitely did. had a good time. But young people in Hollywood. Yes, yes. But you know <laughs> But you know this show this show is about mental health and wellness. Yes. And I read I have dyslexia. Yes, you told me. You had a lot of things going on I didn't know. Yes, uh, OCD. I had a lot going on over here. Wow. I've learned to um, live with it. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't, I, I'm not a victim. I'm just living like the rest of us. We all got something we're battling. And um, right. mine just happens to be, I see the world differently. That's right. what I like to say. Yes, absolutely. And you know, I like to have celebrities on the show because... You know, often you guys are the people who take us away from our reality for an hour and a half, two hours, you know. And it's important for people to know we all share the same feelings. And a lot of us go through some of the same stuff. And Paula, you're so candid in your interviews. You know, there's a lot I learned about you from reading what you had to say. Like I had no idea some of the battles you faced like um, in one of the articles you were talking about homelessness. Yes. Can you can you share because the topic is sustaining work and love in Hollywood. You started out as a child actress and then there was a time where you had to deal with where am I gonna live? How did that happen? 2008. I think 2008 hit everybody so hard. Mm -hmm. I was a baller balling with a job and then the writers decided to go on strike and they wrecked the world. I think the world realized how much Hollywood was a source of our country's finance you know hollywood is really running our country and we had to show that respect in 2008 when the writers went on strike Mm -hmm. and the whole world went on a a, what do they call those a recession you know Mm -hmm. we all we all got hit i was one of the people that got hit by a fraudulent um mortgage company i was also one of the people who was on a show um at the time I was on a Lifetime show that, so it was a blessing because I was on a Lifetime show Mm -hmm. at the time the writers went on strike. So if you were on a show when the writers went on strike, they would pay for your, you know, they would give you a stipend, but it wasn't enough to cover, you know, my, what the show was giving me. And girl, I remember you were taking shows. They were giving you like just... 30 a a pop, you know, just to show up. But Paula, I remember you were telling me you were taking care of your mom 
always, your brother, always, your yes, brother? Um, my mom, and I've always been the breadwinner uh-huh. because I make a lot of money. Right. You know, I married a guy right out of um, college, getting his master's, an actor. So I got pregnant right after we got married. So he was the stay at home dad and I'm the, you know, go to work mom. And then after, so my homelessness is not the same. Right. You know, I I think someone defined it as in between homes Mm -hmm. where I, I didn't have a home. I was, I was kicked out of this home because I, I had to do a short sale of my, my condominium. Well, there's, there's extremes, but just the feeling of knowing you don't have a place even if it's for the night. Being that low mm-hmm. in my life, never mm-hmm. not. My mother is a Libra, like I said, and Libras are hustlers as women. And I've never been, from growing up to my whole, you know, I've never not known where the next was coming from. And I think it hit me hardest because I had a son. You know, I've also never had to really be dependent on anyone in an emotional sense or had anyone depending on me. Mm-hmm. You know, I helped my mom because I could and I chose to. Love you, Miss Claudia. Shout out to Miss Claudia. Yeah, we love you. Not because she couldn't do for herself. She right. owned homes and, you know, she was a homeowner. So she owned real estate. So she wasn't destitute. I did it because I chose to. So, you know, it was the lowest point for me. So mm-hmm. I was blessed because I wasn't afraid to speak my truth. Right. And if I had been ashamed or afraid, the opportunity that got me out of the hotel was a reality show. Uh, Carlos King got me out of the hotel because I wasn't afraid to speak my truth. And it, they created a whole show around it. And, you know, I think TV One is still eating off that show. Hollywood Diva, shout out to Carlos yes. King. So, you know, you just spoke on my honesty. And I'm just a believer that if I'm experiencing it, there's somebody out there also who could help. Absolutely. So let's talk about uh, love. So, Paula, I know you fell in love at work. Is that right? Mm-hmm. You were filming Idlewild. Is no, no Hustle and Flow. Oh, okay, okay. Hustle and Flow. Well, you've done so many. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. When it got when it got dry, I was like, yes, I'm already thirty. Five fifty movies deep, <laughs> you know. So those residuals are like, you know, keeping me alive, and yeah. that's what kind of sucks about being an actor. Is our Screen Actors Guild? They tell you to look at your residuals like extra money. But honey, when you've done as many jobs as I've done, that can sometimes turn into your major money. Right. So the way they dole it out is unfair. To those of us who have a certain amount of money, you know, just sitting in the pot and we're looking at it like I see 5G sitting there and I'm about to get evicted. Can you send me my money? And that that is something that has often happened, like even in the situation that I was in when I lost my home the week after I lost my home, I got more than what was required in one check from Screen Actors Guild. So, it sucks. And it's a blessing all at the same time. Thank you, baby. It's the and I'm so that you, but kisses you at the same time. Yes. And I'm just so proud of you. You have a long-standing career. And a lot of us black folks out here are really excited about the Proud family coming back. Ah, Proud family. From Hoochie to Mama. For real. Raised you guys. Yes. I know. Zandra YouTube, but you were, you were, you were always grown, Zandra. Well, I was always trying to hang. 
Yeah, you was hanging. Yeah. Definitely hanging. Yeah. I tried. Yeah. <laughs> hanging. Um, if I if I can say, I think I might be uh, embarrassed by. I was watching your movies uh, as a young person, but not. Yes, that's what I'm saying. I know I raised you. I know what I'm saying. I was probably I should have been watching the Proud Family, but I'm out here watching uh, some of the movies she Friday. Right Were well, you one of the? Because mothers used to bring little girls up to me. Uh, from Friday, and the little girls would know the lines like verbatim, Ooh. like act it out. And I saw little girls more than one, like straight up, just hand on the hip and boom, 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 like just in sync. Yeah. And I was just, I was very interested in, because for real, for real, my son is 12 and he's wonderful. I let him see Friday. Like, oh, yeah. he's yeah. the only thing of mine that he's ever really seen is the Proud Family. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm going to let him watch my stuff. And he's really never seen my boobs. And I'm, I'm not. I, I told him about them. So, heads up, you know. <laughs> but, no, he doesn't watch my stuff. So, I, I, I commend you for watching my stuff. And I thank you for watching my stuff as a baby. <laughs> but you should have watched it. Well, you're going to get a chance. Yeah, because it's coming back. So You have kids, Cody? Do. That's what I was going to say. It's on Netflix now, right? Well, no. We're on Disney+. Plus. Disney+. Plus. So I know we yes. were streaming it recently. Yes. My, my four-year-old has discovered it from his six-year-old bestie. Yay. So I have been, I've been watching as of late. So we're, on, we're coming back on Disney+. Plus. Right. So <laughs> that's why Disney+, Plus is streaming all five years and the movies, I think we did two movies oh. of the Proud Family. Nice. Um, I'm very excited and hokey and, um, you know, the proud of that project because it is unlike any of the other projects that I really, I typically get cast in. So mm-hmm. possibly it's because it was my voice. It is. You know, I get to... I get to show my intelligence in my voice because they look at me and all of a sudden they see, you know, joy. Thanks to my girl, Sandra. <laughs> so, yes, I really do enjoy the Proud family. So, we've got some, um, we're louder and prouder. Yes. Kiki Palmer has joined the cast. And we have a lot of great um, people from Lizzo to... Um, I don't know, LeBron James coming and hanging out with us. So nice. Cool. So I want to kick it over to Cody and get into Black Love, which is on the Oprah Winfrey Network. Indeed. So you are in your, you just finished your fourth season. Mm-hmm. You're working on five. Love, Black Love. And you know, I feel like I spoke it into existence by you being here. Because I had a guest on the show, Mr. Chris Spencer. Yes. And I told him, I said, oh, you know, you and your lovely wife were on Black Love. I made sure to give you a shout out. And now here you are. (laughs) So thank you. I I love them so much. So tell us about um, what's going on for next season you want to give us any heads up you know unfortunately it might be a little early okay well you know i try yes <laughs> but our you know we my husband and i created black love season one was in 2017 yes. um and alongside it we have grown a platform with blacklove.com black love social channels because we, we wanted to talk about 360 degrees of black love so where the show is about what it takes to make a marriage work, the site and our live events this year, we've done virtual events, um, is really, you know, we we tackle all kinds of topics around self-love, dating, uh, partnership, parenthood, sisterhood, brotherhood, mental health and wellness. Mm-hmm. Those, those topics are extremely important to us because you show up as the sum of who you are and your experiences in your relationships. Mm-hmm. And... So many people are looking for love and partnership, but aren't aware of how everything that they've done and experienced and their mental health specifically impacts that. Sure. So we wanted to talk about all of it. And, you know, often I talk about my husband on the show 
it's not always in a good light. Forgive me. But um, for you, is it difficult for you to work with your husband on the show? Yes. Um, yeah, I would actually, so I'll backtrack my yes and say, not so much on the show anymore. Okay. In general, you know, we created the show, we created the platform, we're growing this brand, and it's very hard for us to work together. I think the show, because we've been doing it the longest, literally from the, we met in September 2013. Okay. By January 2014, we had agreed to work on this project okay. together, dating. Um, we got a camera loan from Canon, and then by fall 2014, so a year after we met, we were shooting. Um, and so we've been working together for long enough to have lots of problems and sorting through them. <laughs> well, so tell me about that camera loan. Yeah, well, so I, funny enough, I used to do PR for Canon for a short period, and I managed their camera loan program because their cinema cameras were new. So they wanted more cameras in the hands of filmmakers. And my job- And black female filmmakers. Yes, Diva. What's funny is my job was to, you know, get those relationships between Canon and filmmakers. We would be at film festivals and that's where we would meet the filmmakers. And I met my husband at the Toronto Film Festival. Doing oh, which one? At the yeah. Toronto Film Festival. <laughs> yeah. I, I've been to that one. I had a- um, Phone booth went there. That's a Phone nice place. Yes. Okay. So go ahead. Dish. Met September at, at TIFF and then by January at Sundance, I had convinced Canon to give him a loan. Him a loan. I and then I quit my job and we started oh. to get I love those kind of stories. Did you know he was the one or did you at, the, at first just think he was your writing? No, I, pretty, I knew he was special. Whose dog is that? My, my bad. Of course, someone decides to come over. What happened to Peanut? Oh, Peanut is gone. Oh, I'm sorry. Live as long as we I'm sorry. So, you know what? Both of you guys went to Howard University. Yes, we did. Bye, son. That's right. And so it's such a big deal. How do you feel about oh, our I got new... a goodie bag. Sorry, guys. How, how do you feel about our new vice elected vice president? I mean, I think it's wonderful and amazing. It's awesome. I'm, I'm also an AKA, so she's my profile. Oh, cool. Nice. That's a good thing. Yeah, it's amazing. I should have been, but yeah. I, I made the wrong choice. <laughs> As I usually do in life. Oh, I'm always going through it. <laughs> Before I get it right. Wait. So look, Cody. Yeah. You. Uh, oh, I wanted to ask you. Did you go to school for psychology um, or counseling? Because your show has to do with couples and, you know, opening up about their marriage. So. No, that was definitely of interest to me. And I didn't, I did not go down that path, mostly because I was like, I need to study business so I can make a lot of money. And you know, like I just, what I had in my head, right? Mm -hmm. And of course I uh, left the business school and went to the school of communications um, to study journalism because I clearly like talking, I like talking to people, I like asking questions. Um, but that interest in really the, like the human experience and relationships, that's just a part of who I am. And so I'm kind of obsessed with the notion of like psychology and, and therapy and counseling and certainly in it myself. But I just, I'm always, you know, fascinated by people who are in that profession. But no, I did not study it. You ask some great questions. You really get your guests to open up. So, and it's just like, even when I was telling you, my husband and I, <clears throat> excuse me, we were watching an episode and he was like, the men aren't talking, it's just the women talking. And I'm like, no, they take turns. So then he's like, I notice a lot of these men aren't having sex. <laughs> this was like the last episode we saw that came on last week. Okay, okay, yeah, I don't know which one that was. Girl, he was like, you can just tell, look at him. 
none of them are getting it. Opinion, okay. Yeah, that was his opinion. So we were like the wives aren't giving any up. Yeah, so we were like going back and forth watching the show. And I think at the time he wasn't getting it. So I think I think he was projecting, yes. So I, I just that being said, watching the show is quite fun when you get to watch it with your spouse. Because you can relate to what they're going through. And that was also part of why we, well, two things. One is, you know, my husband and I created this together. Every episode has to pass the Tommy test. We want to make sure that men enjoy watching it. And that's why Tommy has to enjoy watching it. Right. And that we try to represent a perspective. If a, if a wife is talking about an issue and, and talking about what the problem was and how it got resolved and the husband says nothing and I'm like okay what do you think about that well what what was your take what did you say when she said this yes. because it is important to see both sides even if they're not the same um and part of why we wanted to do this was so that people we wanted to normalize all the things that can happen in a marriage mm -hmm. in a relationship and, and I don't say normalize all the things but normalize the fact that things happen and that you're looking at two people who've gone through it. So the question is, how did you get through it? That's really all that matters to me. It's funny you said that I ask good questions. I literally wanted to know what's the worst thing that can happen in a marriage and how did you get through it? And the people that are sitting there on that couch, you know that they're still together. You know what I mean? It's not like we're looking at people with, with a few examples, a few um, exceptions. It's not like you're looking at people who are divorced you're looking at people who have said this happened, this happened, this happened, and this is what I learned from it, and this is how this is how we're sitting here today. And that was just do, really important to me. Do many of the couples um, get counseling? Like, are most of them, you know, do you know if they've had counseling before? I mean, I could not put a number on it, but I would say quite a lot. Sure. I would say that's a running theme, mm -hmm. is that many of the couples and we've talked at this point to over 200 couples we've been doing this since 2014 wow. um and so on the show you've seen like 70 right but in you know in terms of how many people we've actually sat down and talked to for an hour to two hours it's over 200 couples so for sure i've observed overwhelming number of people who um value therapy or counseling mm -hmm. um during or premarital or both um, and another thing that I've observed a lot of is um, primarily women at some point saying, this is what I want. I want to be married. I want to have kids. If you don't want that, then let's just not do this. Just, And I always bring that up because so many of us feel like we can't do that mm -hmm. um, or we can't make the first move or whatever. So many women that we've interviewed have that story where they were just like, what, what are we doing? And it's not an ultimatum. It's like, if that's, if this isn't where you want to be, then that's okay. So, so many um, people in the black community, so many of us, we get our counseling through the church and through the church only. And so this helps to open up experiences for other people who may be getting married or who've been through a divorce and getting remarried you know, to identify with some things, learn some things. Usually on this show, I have a mental health professional. But go to Elaine Oliver is here to um, help us out with the experience, the shared experiences she's had on her show. <clears throat> um, I completely agree with you. And in terms of the fact that many people in the black community, A, find their counseling in the church. Yes. Or B, not at all. And one of the right. reasons that that stood out to me, that so many of the couples that we've interviewed mentioned therapy, was because of those two facts. And we try to highlight it as much as possible when people say it, however casually. Some people talk about it for a long time because they're like, oh, it saved us. And some people are like, you know, we went once, but we learned this. And that's still important to see that people are making that choice. Exactly. Um, and and so I, you know, I just think it's it, it's one of my responsibilities to make sure that we're showing all of the ways in which our couples are finding their way from from through the through the difficult times. 
Um, it just so happens that quite a few of them credit therapy, or at the very least, finding a path to self-awareness and self-growth. And therapy is often a big part of that. You know, um, I want to thank the 91.5 listeners for tuning in once again. Um, you can go to my website, itswhereiam.com. There are some resources there. Please check them out. There's pictures and biographies of some of the guests, but there's also resource information. So please check it out. I'd like to jump in and remind everyone that Jesus wasn't a formalized um, practitioner either. And neither were the disciples. Okay, Paula has a... um, (laughs) Which I watched it this morning. You have something... I don't know if it's on Instagram or Facebook, but it's called Biblecast. I actually watched it. I actually liked it. All my YouTube <laughs> stuff, I, I kind of hide because it's my my alter ego stuff that you know I don't know if people. I don't really care. It's just me expressing. So yes, that's my Biblecast. Thank you for watching, honey. I did. I said came on this morning. Yes, I don't. I don't put it. I haven't done an Apple or Spotify or any of that. Um, it's just for me. It's my therapy, you know. Along with singing, I know. I didn't know you were a singer. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you sent me some clips of you singing. Beautiful voice. <laughs> oh, you love me. I do love you. And Cody, please tell us about. Black Love After Love. Oh, yes. So for the first time ever, we did an after show for Black Love called After Love, which can be found on our YouTube page, youtube.com. That doesn't mean they got a divorce. No. It's Black Love 360, child. Concept that we're very... There we go, cutie. Yes, cutie. It's important to know that it's okay for it not to work. Right. And to figure out how to be a happy, healthy person after that. So we'll talk about that another day. But After Love was um, me in conversation with a few of the couples from each episode that we, um, each episode that was on OWN this season, we did an After Love episode for. And that's on our YouTube page. And so those were a lot of fun. And the couples were able to see the episode and talk about that and talk with each other. That's the first time that besides our live events where our couples can talk to each other. And that was a lot of fun. Well, I want to thank you both for being here. It's only a half an hour show, unfortunately. Smart and intelligent, Sandra. And you, did you go to school for it? Because you've always been my therapist. (laughs) I did get a degree in psychology. Oh, that explains a lot. Yes. <laughs> yes, communications and psychology. But I went to a state school out here, Nevada State Scorpions. Oh, why are you doing that? Are you blessing yourself because of that? I hope not. Well, I didn't go to Howard. Like, I was there, you know, on the campus, and I was trying to go to the parties and whatnot. <laughs> I saw you. Yeah, I was there. But, uh, I'm going to tell your listeners, she doesn't remember me at Howard, but I remember her. <laughs> that will be for the after show, Paula. That's not on this platform. Um, anyhow, it's where I am.com. Tune in. Thank you, 91.5. Thank you, Paula J. Parker. Thank you, Cody Elaine Oliver. Thank you. Thank you. It's where I am. Oh, wait. I always do this. I'm sorry. One more thing. For those who love Christmas. My friend has a movie coming out on Lifetime on December 22nd. It's called The Christmas High Note. It's 8 p.m. Eastern and Pacific Time. Please tune in. The Christmas High Note. My friend, um, Stu. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you know your boy um, Faison has been in the press with his suit, his lawsuit. <laughs> you always spilling some tea somewhere. <gasps> what lawsuit? That's big. That's big. And he's suing for um, not promoting him press-wise um, universally. 
I think there's, I think it's racial discrimination, but they left him out of all of the promotions for, um, couples, the vacation. couples retreat. Couples couples. <gasps> oh, yes, he was in that. My baby Callie, shout out to Callie Hawk. Wow. She heard that movie, they both did. Yeah, Faison was on the show. Collaborator or corroborator, so that's where a lot of his case comes from. You know, he was on my show last year. Oh, yeah, that's what made me mention. You know, I Thank know you. you. Thank we're, you. We're all cool. We grew up together. Yeah. So we're going to have to hit up Faye when he gets that billion dollar payout. He starts up his own uh, movie studio. He's been in South Africa. So guys, we have to get international with our hustling. Oh, wow. Yeah. We're, we're done, right? Did you start recording? It's where I am.com.